Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. I'm going to make something a little bit different today. I've been feeling sick and didn't have any mojo, so I decided to let the products tell me what kind of project they wanted to become. And in the end, it's much easier than it looks. So these are the items that I pulled from my stash that I was inspired by. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to take these things out. If I use them, I use them. If I don't, I don't. And um, I will have everything listed downstairs in the description box, everything that you saw on the screen. And um, we'll just kind of see how this all comes together. So I'm using a five by seven canvas board. It is pre gessoed. So I did not, did not have to put any gesso down to seal it. And I'm using just some crackle texture paste through the polka dot stencil, as well as the, this larger dotty six by nine stencil. And I am not worrying about if something is neat, if something is going on, you know, covering the board completely. In fact, I don't want it to cover the board completely. And I like that some, some of these are a little more grungy and gritty and streaky, and some are a little more smooth. That just adds to the interest, in my opinion. So was not careful at all about how I laid this down and where I, where I put my stencils, but I allowed it some time to dry. I did hit it with my heat tool just for the sake of time. But let me encourage you when you're doing things like this, if you have the the ability or the luxury or whatever you might want to call it to allow things to dry naturally, I would encourage you to do that. In fact, I need to try to do that more. Just allow myself that space to do that because you get a very different outcome or you can anyway when things dry naturally versus if they're forced with a heat tool. So you can see that um, all that beautiful texture on the canvas board is coming out from the canvas itself to the crackle within the crackle paste and of course the different um, sizes of the polka dots and I just think it's very interesting and very fun and then I sprayed it with all of my beautiful distress spray stains and I think there was an oxide in there as well as a uh, mica stain so you can see how I'm hitting it with my heat tool and it's causing those colors to blend in a way that was not pleasant so just taking my, my paper towel and just dabbing that off and um, allowing the paper to pick up that excess. And again, here I am trying to hurry it along, dabbing more, <laughs> dabbing more, dabbing more. And ultimately I was going to um, do some heat embossing here, but the paint still wasn't fully dry. The ink still wasn't fully dry. So I decided I would just come in with, with some stays on ink and just go ahead and use these big bold background stamps just to add some of that beautiful texture it's a visual texture right because obviously it's it's ink so it's going to lay flat but it's a beautiful visual texture and i just love it and here of course you can see that i am taking my ink pad direct to my canvas board and grunging up those edges as well as um, hitting some of the the higher points on those um, stenciled elements and here I am coming in with just some white acrylic paint and my brayer and again trying to hit some of those higher pieces of the um, stenciled circles and and you know sometimes I'm even hitting the canvas on the lower parts and that just to me adds a lot of visual interest and brightness and yes I'm going over with white where I just put the black and you can't tell in person but you can see both layers I mean you can't tell on the camera but in person you can see both layers and you can see that the white dried back quite a bit and it really just took on a lighter hue of the color that was beneath it and that is exactly what I wanted I didn't want the bold bright white that say an acrylic ink would have left because I'm using the bold bright white to be the contrast with the wreath so I have this beautiful glossy cardstock I picked it up from a stamp and scrap expo a couple years ago don't know who the vendor was but it's a beautiful glossy white cardstock and I have die cut out several different um, branchy and leafy elements from the Christmas branch die set as well as the wild weeds die set both from Lindsay of course, like I said earlier, they will be listed downstairs in the description box. And so I start by just laying out my branches. I wasn't sure exactly what life this was going to take. As I said, I'm allowing it to talk to me. So had I done something a little bit different at this point, I would have put down a circle, like a circle frame, so that I knew exactly where to place 
my branches because I have wonky eyes. Like they are uneven. <laughs> I can't. Yeah. Anyway, you can see. But I decided that I did not want to just leave the branches, which I thought was actually quite cool. And that would have been very interesting had I left it at that point, not in a bad way, but in a very unique kind of way. But once I put the foliage up to it and I just kind of auditioned it, I decided, yeah, I wanted the foliage on there. I die cut it. Let's use it. And so a lot of this bit is not shown only because I kept getting excited and taking the canvas closer to me and thus outside of the camera frame. So a lot of it just didn't show, but I'm just using the different elements that I have die cut both in the glossy cardstock as well as the vellum. And I'm just filling in the spaces, trying to keep things fairly sym symmetrical, but it's not, it's a wonky oval, but I'm okay with that. Again, just filling in the pieces, filling in the um, empty spaces. I added a bunch of the berries as well. I did not use a whole bunch of the ivy. You see that ivy over on the right side, but here it is. I think it's very sweet. It's very different than anything I've ever done, I believe. And all of the hot glue strings were driving me batty. So I remembered this tip that I learned from a fellow YouTuber. I don't remember who it was, but I know I learned it on YouTube. And I took my heat tool and I just went over the whole project. And other than two or three um, little glue strings that I can still see, it really kind of allowed the rest of them to just kind of mm, shrivel up. And they are no longer bothersome. There's one right there. <laughs> and then there's one on the top. Those are the only two that I really see. But this is my project, guys. It really it was short and sweet. The hardest, not hardest, nothing was hard about it. But the longest part was the drying time. And, you know, again, had I allowed myself the time to let everything dry naturally, it would have a little bit of a different look than it does. But you can see all those beautiful layers, all that lovely texture, the different colors. And I just love the way the bright white pops off of all that color. And like I said, it's really much easier than it looks. Lots of layers, a little bit of time. Beautiful. But what do you think? Drop a comment downstairs in the, in the comment section, and I would love to connect with you down there. I honestly want your true opinion. Do you think it's too difficult for you, or is it something that you would jump right on the bandwagon and create right along with me? Let me know. And guys, thank you for spending time with me today. I know you could be doing a million other things, but you're here with me. If you have not already subscribed, let me encourage you to do that and hit the like button as well if you like the video. But until next time, y'all, this has been Nancy, the Handy Scandy. Mwah! I'm out.